are listening to Owning the Buy Box, an IP secure podcast. This is the podcast for agencies, brands, and aggregators who want to master Amazon, push out unauthorized competition, and take their business to the next level. You're about to hear a conversation that'll help you maximize your growth on Amazon by owning the Buy Box. Let's get into the show. This is Owning the Buy Box. I'm your host, Dave Cooper. I'm also the CEO and founder of IP Secure. You're listening to part two of our podcast with Brennan Ursu, Director of Marketing Strategy for ZoomGet, the global leader in the distribution and sale of disposable gloves. Do you think, like, if, if I was starting my own business today, uh, let's say I had, you know, a, a, a consumer product and I was launching my business, my e-commerce business primarily, would you suggest that I try to sort of restrict the channel in the sense that maybe at the sake of growth, minimize the places, right? Where you're building your presence and selling your product, i.e., you know, Amazon, et cetera, your own website, mm-hmm. right? a handful of sort of core areas. Um, or, or should I like launch a reseller program, right? Build a contract, put some policy in, in place and let as many people want to sell my product that I can possibly find. Mm-hmm. So I'm sort of weighing the pros and cons of, of those sort of strategies, right? One is I try to go direct to consumer. I try to sort of control it, the channel as much as possible. And But the other is maybe I just put guardrails in place and I, I open it up, mm-hmm. you know? I'm curious what you think about that. Yes, I again, I, it definitely depends on your team size, your resource, mm. your resources, and ultimately, obviously, what what are really your goals, right? Um, if you're yeah. a small company, you're probably not going to have the ability to manage all sorts of uh, all sorts of various channels. I mean, a small team, you can do hundreds of millions of dollars exclusively on Amazon, Walmart. Shopify, eBay. Do you want to expand to brick and mortar or to resell? Yes. I mean, it helps a lot with brand presence, brand awareness, and in making yourself a a, more of a brand rather than just a product. And to survive mid long term on these e-commerce platforms, you have to have brand awareness. If you're not getting branded search on your product, you're not going to survive. You're just not. Um, mm. You have to have. You're a you have commodity. To create, you're not. You're not. You're, you're not a brand at that point. Yeah. Exactly. You have to create customer lifetime value. You have to get those repeat purchases. You have to increase your recurring revenue as much as you possibly can, as well as your geographical expansion. Either whether that's locationally or via marketplaces. So, again, I would say you want to take things in terms of what what does that priority look like and what's that impact going to look like do you think you're going to your product's going to have a big impact in that reseller market or maybe b2b or in rfps then hey you should probably pursue that if you think that's going to be a big market for you and it's going to unlock a lot of stuff but you should do it in a wise manner you know pretty much every brand they're going to have a contract in place that doesn't mean that the people you're selling to are going to care. You know, it's super, super easy to, you know, break a contract, quote unquote, when you're selling, you know, when someone is buying a product from you and you're never going to figure that out. Right. Um, Right. So, <laughs> yeah. And they know you'll never figure it out. Ex- right? yeah. Exactly. You know, it's just going to be, well, how are you going to figure out, you know, who, who's buying that product? So you still need to have some sort of supply chain visibility. And it's at this day and age, it's not that hard to get. You know, um, supply chain it's visibility not, is I, becoming I, more of a commodity. There's still people out there. It's shocking to me that there's still people out there who don't invest anything in any sort of serialization or track and trace. You know, mm-hmm. the like you said, there's super basic elementary solutions you could buy and it, and and sort of deploy. And then there's very sophisticated, obviously, and, and very mm-hmm. expensive um, routes you could go. But to have nothing to me. Um, is is 
is is surprising and I think creates a big risk. Definitely. And at the end of the day, Dave, you know, I, I am a proponent for growing as much as you can and not striving for perfection before you take a step. Because if you're always looking for perfection, you're never going to grow. You're never going to get anywhere, right? If, if you're pretty far along, you know, it takes, you know, 10% effort to get 90% of the way. Hey, you can get the ball rolling. There's nothing wrong with that. Just be aware, okay, these are the potential risks that are going to open up right? And you can try and mitigate those risks and you can try to shut down any issues when they come up while you keep exponentially growing and then continuously improve your supply chain. But going in and having nothing, that's just, there's just no reason you should be doing that. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, right. Amazon is much more than a sales channel for brands. Like you said, it's, it's the, the consumer's window into who you are and you can't let anyone, you know, just create that message and, and, and own that narrative. I mean, that's insane. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so for, I mean, I, I, I still talk to brands, I've been doing this a long time, like 25 years. And there are brands who say to me, I don't sell on Amazon. And I'm like, Your product, like, have you ever gone there and typed it? It's riddled with it. It's everywhere. (laughs) So what they mean is they're not benefiting. They're not taking advantage, right, of Mm -hmm. the world's most important platform and and taking steps to take ownership of that uh, and capitalize on it. They're basically just turning around and saying, we sell to distributors. They sell wherever. We don't know how much of their production comes from Amazon, and we don't care. So you just have kind of this free-for-all going on you know, on the platform. And at the end of the day, they rationalize it by saying, well, we've been paid for the product. It's not a counterfeit, Dave. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, the, but that's that's besides the point, right? For all the reasons you mentioned, Brennan, right? It, all the impacts that this thing has on your business long-term could be fatal, especially when e-com is just getting, you know, these platforms are just becoming more important, not less important. So, you know, if you're in that position, you need to change it quickly. Definitely. Quickly. Definitely. I right. mean, you're not going to you're not going to let some random person come into your brick and mortar storefront and just start selling your product, you know. <laughs> that's no that's not going to happen or so, let some person put up a brick and mortar store with your brand name on it even if it, you're not in control. Why would you do that on a on the world's largest online platform that's going to get way more foot traffic <laughs> digitally than you ever will in your brick and mortar store? It makes no sense. Who is in your buy box? That's the key question and the difference between sales growth and brand abuse and revenue loss. Monitoring your buy box is the key to brand protection success on Amazon. At IP Secure, our analytics will drive your behavior. It's not about taking down more sellers, removing more unauthorized listings. It's about knowing who's taking your revenue minute by minute and then adjusting your response appropriately, taking action when necessary and recapturing that revenue. Visit us today, ipsecure.com to learn how. Well, as an omni-channel guy, you must have been uh, pleased to hear recently about how you know, Amazon's doing this new thing with Facebook and Instagram and, you know, it, which I, I thought was really interesting because I was also sort of on a, a, as a side note, like focusing on what Facebook and Instagram were doing. I always assumed it would be invest in their own infrastructure, their own everything. They even took steps not long ago, right, to stop or maybe that was Shopify. I don't remember. But anyway, there's always these, these constant they're constantly tinkering with their own ecosystems, right? And it, it feels like Jekyll and Hyde. On one day, it's like, well, we're going to make it harder for you to integrate. And then, then they do something like this, and they make it a little bit easier to integrate, I guess, where it benefits them. Um, but I don't think a lot of people – I come from the legal sort of brand protection world, and a lot of those folks don't understand the implication of that announcement for them, right? Um, and – the the quantity hundreds of millions of people now that potentially could have access 
um, to their product probably had access to it before, um, but maybe not as easily, maybe, you know, not as frictionless. Um, so anyway, I thought that was pretty big news. And I would think as an omnichannel guy, you, you like that sort of integration. Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah. it, it's never going to be a bad thing in my mind. Um, yeah. and, and you know what, it, it just makes things a little bit, again, a little bit easier to get on more channels and to grow your brand more. Right. Yeah. Ultimately, mm. that's the goal is increasing revenue, increasing profit. If 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 a channel or a marketplace is going to allow that to be done in a more efficient and effective manner, I'm all for it. But at the same time, something like, let's say, TikTok, right? They're not integrating. They're creating their own marketplace with TikTok yeah. shop. Is the benefit, is there a benefit for being on that channel right now? I mean, I can tell you for PPE products, the market size, the total addressable market, it's going to be tiny. It's not going to be large. Yeah. Um, even for consumer electronics or for household goods, things like, let's say, massage guns or cordless vacuums or air fryers, it's not going to be anywhere near Amazon, right? Well, then what's, is there a benefit for being on the channel? I mean, it's going to take a lot of management, isn't it? Well, I would still say yes. Um, first off, you're going to get that first movers advantage. What if TikTok shop blows up? You're going to be the first one there. You're going to be one of the biggest players on the platform, right? And second, again, it's just, you can view it as just another way to get more mid or upper funnel marketing at a more cost efficient manner, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, doing TikTok ads, um, it can be profitable, but in, at the end of the day, it's not always the most profitable um, advertising method that you can run for a lot of stores, especially ones that are primarily on the online marketplaces. Um, but you know, with TikTok shop, conversion rates are gonna be increasing, et cetera. You can get more of that mid and upper funnel marketing for your brand at just a more cost efficient manner, making it, okay, well, hey, maybe it is worth it to be on TikTok shop because you get multiple benefits from being on there. Is it your number one priority? Maybe not, um, but it should definitely be on the list. Yeah, makes it challenging for a guy like you though, because that's a lot, like when you think about all these different elements, um, it's a lot of moving parts, right? Um, to, to keep track of, for sure. Um, and I, I would also add to the list that you just said, the other risk is um, somebody else shows up to that platform, right? And, and start selling your product before you get there, <laughs> um, which mm -hmm. is totally not of the realm of possibility. And now they're setting sort of, you know, the, the tone around the price and the brand and the consumer experience. And, and that, that's definitely risky, right? I don't think you want that. Oh, but yeah. at the same time, if you don't really, if your customers are not on TikTok, I agree, it's, it's, it's hard. You don't want to spend a lot of time on it, right? But you need to, you need to know about it for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely, yeah. fully agree. You've been listening to Owning the Buy Box, a show from IP Secure. Never miss an episode by subscribing to the show in your favorite podcast player. Please give us a rating, leave a comment, and share episodes that you love. That helps us keep delivering you the tools you need to sharpen your competitive edge and ensure your authorized sellers always own the buy box. We'll see you next time.